everyone, Susan here again. Um, tonight I have a couple of book reviews I want to do for you. Um, I read a lot, okay? And usually I get my books from the library, the local library here. It is the lowest cost option for someone who likes to read a lot. I could go broke buying books. <laughs> so I just go to the library, I borrow books, I read them, I take them back, and I get some more. So, uh, anyway, the first book I want to share with you tonight is called Frozen Beneath by Brian Horick. Okay? Now, this book has a lot of draw for me because it discusses uh, Northern Ontario, which is where I live, Northern Ontario, Canada. Um... It references North Bay, Ontario, which is where I used to live for like 13, 14 years. And it's only 20 minutes or so up the highway from here. Um, it also references um, Elliott Lake, Blind River, um, Northern Ontario towns, and uh, I've been to them too. <laughs> so it, it had the draw for me immediately because it's local. Uh, but it's also a very good story. The main character is uh, Sergeant Kevin Stevenson. And three words to describe him is tall, blonde, and military. Okay. Um, that's the cover photo. That, that got me right off the bat on the uh, shelving. Um, it, it has to do, this story has to do with ice fishing. And that's an ice shack sitting on the ice. And it's um, way out in the middle of nowhere. So it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, mysterious setting already for what they find under the ice. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> that's part of the thrill of reading it. Um, the people that would like this book is anyone in the area like me that that would recognize landmarks um, that's basically all that you would recognize in here is landmarks the story is totally fictitious um, anybody who likes reading about the Canadian or US Army they'd like it um, if you like reading ice fishing stories or um, things along that line. I mean, there's uh, snowmobiling and stuff. Like, it's all uh, northern Canadian winter activities. So, if you like reading that stuff, you'd like it. Okay. The um, My favorite part uh, is um, found on page 250, and it's the first line. It's suddenly out from the dark, a giant mouth with long teeth filled the monitor and then darted off into the darkness all within a second. So this is something big and fast and um, long teeth. Ugh. Sounds a little dangerous, okay? And it's um, very easy to visualize that when you're reading. So that adds to the thrill of the book for me. Um, problems with this book that I saw were, there were two of them. One is, it has a lot of swearing in it. Um, I really don't get why it has to be that um, prolific with the swearing. Um, so if that's bothersome to you, if you don't like dealing with that, then this isn't a book for you. Uh, but if you can get past it, uh, it is a good story. It's very interesting what they find in the bottom of the lake. And um, let's just say, if you like aliens, hmm, this might be something you'd like to read. Um, I won't go further than that to describe them, but... Um, The only, the other thing that bothered me about this book was that it, um, it puts across the um, idea that Canadians drink a lot, 
I mean a lot. <laughs> um, now that may be true when you go ice fishing. You may have some beers, whatever, you know. Um, but this was, uh, to me, it was overboard um, on how much they referenced drinking in the, in the book. Um, so that detracted from it a bit uh, for me. But as I said, it's a, it's a good story, a uh, good storyline from start to finish. And the finish was worth reading the book for. So that's the first one I wanted to share tonight. And the second one is Never Saw, uh, Never Saw It Coming by Linwood Barclay. Okay. Now, this is a writer that lives near Toronto, Ontario. So it's about five hours south of here down the highway. So it's, it's again, it's, it's in our area. Um, this book, uh, the first line is very short and it doesn't really show you a lot. Uh, the first line is, this is ridiculous, Marsha Taggart said. That's it, okay? Um, that doesn't give you much to go on, but the book blurb tells you, basically, uh, here, uh, Keisha Ceylon is a psychic. At least that's what she passes herself off as. The truth is, Keisha's real powers have more to do with separating families from their money than actually seeing into the netherworld. Keisha watches the news for stories of missing family members. She gives it a few days, then moves in, tells these families she's had a vision, that she may have a clue to where these missing people are. And by the way, she charges for this service and likes to see the money up front. Keisha's latest mark is a man whose wife disappeared a week ago. She's seen him on TV pleading for his wife to come home or if he's been if she's been abducted pleading with whoever took her to let her go. Keisha knows a payoff when she sees one. So she pays a visit to this anxious husband and tells him her vision. Trouble is, her vision just happens to be close enough to the truth that it leaves this man rattled and it may very well leave Keisha dead. That got me. I had to read it. <laughs> um, the main character in this book is Keisha Ceylon, the, the pretend psychic, and three words that describe her are scammer, complicated, and charismatic. Uh, that is the cover of it. And again, ice, right? Desert, deserted place. Um, it's very uh, intriguing. Who would like this book? Okay, anybody that likes murder mysteries or suspense would like this. Uh, those that are skeptical of psychics would like this because that's what it deals with, basically. Um, my favorite part of this book was is found on page 132 and 133. That's when we get a peek into what Keisha's childhood was like. And we, saw, we see why this way of life is second nature to her. Um, although she does accept responsibility for the choices she makes as an adult, um, she still wants to lay some of the blame at her uh, poor dead mother's door uh, for giving her this this style of life is what she's used to from childhood so um i really liked the storyline in this book and uh, the ending was pretty much um what i uh expected but i it the way it got to the end of the book was not what I expected. Um, it's really good. Um, there wasn't too much uh, swearing or whatever. Um, 
there was a little bit of a reference to drinking in it, but not much. Okay. And uh, what I liked was the uh, the one detective was on to her but couldn't prove it. So that's something to look for because just when you think you know you've got it figured out, they throw a, a twist in it for you. So um, I would totally recommend this book as well. Both of them actually. Um, and just coincidentally, uh, both of these books deal with Ontario. Uh, both of them are written by authors that live fairly close to me. And I didn't even know it. I just picked both of these up off the shelves. And somehow they relate to each other. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you like book reviews... Um, and you'd like to see more on my channel, please leave me a comment in the section below. Uh, in the description box, I will leave links to Donna Connolly's blog, and, where I found this book review template, and where she got it from. So, um, check out her blog too, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.